Torah tells us that <coughs> that initially Moshe would not nurse from the Egyptian nursemaids. So Miriam, who was standing by, approached her and said, "Would you like me to find the Jewish nursemaid?" And immediately she brought Yocheved, which was the mother of Moshe, and she nursed Moshe for two years till he was weaned. After he was weaned, the Torah tells us the second call, Vativeyu but Labas Paro. She brought him back to the door of Paro. This O Rabbisenu's Albimedjish Rabbis Parshishmos. He says the Chazal in the Midrash they touch upon this question. A person of Moshe's spiritual dimension. Is this an appropriate environment to be brought up in the palace of a heathen? It's not exactly a spiritual environment. It's everything which is not in sync with what Moshe is and represents. It's evidently that level of exposure was important in terms of his future development. We say there's, there's no root and there's no approach which is like Ma'akodesh Baruch Hu. God has endless ways to bring about the same end result. It seems to be, but Hashem, that means, why was He in the house of Paro? Because He had to be there. Unrelated, in terms of bringing about the ultimate gula, if Hashem wants to bring gula, he'll, the gula is going to be regardless. So why did Hashem want Moshe should be raised and developed and mentored in the house of Paro? Lo yeh based Paro, zeshom medrash rabos, v'tiveu lebas Paro, hoyse bas Paro. Now this is very important. Vaf melch Moshiach shos lipora miedom yoshi vimon b'medina. There's a principle that the one who ultimately will topple that kingdom is always in the in the in the midst. Of that, of that kingdom which oppresses us, Edom. This exile is called Golis Edom. This is the exile of Edom, and the Gemara says in Sanhedrin, "Where is Mashiach located?" So the Gemara says in Rome, Eliyahu Novi said one of them, or I asked Eliyahu Novi, "Where is Mashiach?" He says he's in the gates of Rome. What's Rome? Rome is Edom. That's the Edomite. This is Golis Edom. So just as the Mashiach, which ultimately will bring about the redemption, he will topple evil. Identically, whoever the Goel is, whoever the Redeemer will be, he has to be found in the, literally in the midst of what? Of the, of the oppressor. Now we have to understand that, but the question is why? This is something which is profound to those who understand. If you understand the profoundness which lies in this, but we have to understand it. I was saying something. The word header means vacuum. Header is vacuum. It's a vacuum. It's a void. He says void attaches itself to a situation. And because of the vacuum which exists, existence takes on a certain form, a certain profile. Nimza ki atzur shetochal, nimshech achar dovi header, that the state of affairs which the world takes on is based on that vacuum. Because there's a vacuum, that's why the world looks the way it looks. Because of the vacuum, the void which exists, it causes it to take on another profile. What does that mean? Now, 
Now, what does vacuum and void need? It has to be dispelled. It has to be corrected. So what does that engender? Something, I'll give you an example. The body, if there is a problem in the, in the body, naturally the body heals itself. It rehabilitates itself. But let's say the body is fully functional. There's nothing. There's, no, the, there's nothing which activates the system to address because there's nothing to address. The way Hashem created the world, the world is supposed to function at a certain level. What about if in the world there's all of a sudden there's a vacuum? There's a void. That void automatically activates something which has to address that void. Now, what addresses that void? What, ad what addressed the void of Mitzrayim? We were in the void. There was a vacuum of impurity, a goel. The reason why Moshe was there, that drew him there. What is the vacuum of existence today? Golos Edom. That is the Chil Hashem. That's the void. So what is needed to address that void? Melch Mashiach. Only Melch Mashiach could address that void. Nothing else could address that void. Therefore, where is Melch Mashiach? What drew him there? The void. What is that void? The gates of Rome. That's the principle he's saying. Ki b'malchus Edom. What is Malchus Edom, the kingdom of Edom? What does that represent? Vacuum, Chil Hashem, impurity. That's what it represents. Mekabal Olam Malchus Mashiach, Kilaim Devukim Zebazel Legamri. Therefore, the world is in need of Malchus Melch Mashiach, because one is, necessitates the other. Ulzatam Hayodo Shal Yaakov Ucheses Bakeb Shal Esov. Says the one, Rifki Menu gave birth to twins says, Esav is, was the firstborn, and it's, the Torah tells us, as he was leaving the womb of his mother, Yaakov was holding on to his heel. He's holding on to his heel. Sha'arem is, what, what is that alluding to? What is that a symbolism of? He's holding on to him. Ki Yaakov nechaz nidbak beheder, Esav. Yaakov, who is the one who addresses that void, Ed, Esav is evil. Impurity. He actually undermines existence. So what, what engenders Yaakov to be attached to him? Esav. It's the voice. He's holding on to a seal. What does the, the heel represent? It's the bottom. It's the lowest. That's what it is. He's holding on to the heel. The heel is the most extreme level of void and vacuum. He's holding on to the heel. That's the bottom. Shusof shel dover. That's the end of it. Because your Lord, your Malchus, a Mashiach, a Lashlemus, and when Melech Mashiach is not reaching at a point where he's ready to come, Nigra Malchus Mashiach le Edom. So where do you find him? There's an association. Because once he reveals himself, there is no Edom. There is. He, he subsumes Edom. He, he vaporizes Edom. Because that's, he's addressing the void. There's no longer a void. He was saying he's in the gates of Rome. That means there's still a Rome. There's still an Edom. The void is there. But who's associated? Who's attached to that? Melch Mashiach. That's where the calf is found. And that's where he will be grazing. Or he will be staying. Melch Mashiach. Now, what is a calf? A calf is a young cow. That's what a calf is. He's ref the person refers to him associated with the void as an egel. Not as, as, a, as, as a mature cow. Just as a calf, physically, it's not fully developed. It's not fully formed. When it speaks about the different species... Kosher species. It says Vesa Chazir. What's the Chazir? It's Mafris Parso. It's not Malagera. It has split hooves, but it doesn't chew its cud. Right? It says Vugera Lo Yigor. What is it, Gero? What is an animal chews its cud? It comes up and goes back, back and forth until it's fully digested, till it's liquefied. But what is the word? What the word he would go rare means to draw. Mitzvah Goreris Mitzvah, right? One draws after another. It says, the Chazir, 
It has split hooves, but Geru lo Yigor. Nothing will follow it. I mean, it's the end of the road. Once Edom ends, there's no other kingdom that follows, meaning kingdom of, of a similar nature. That's the end of all exiles. That's where it comes to an end. Shinogores Malchus Acheres Achreo. Volnomal Nikroshmo Chazir. Why is the pig called the Chazir? What is the meaning of Lachazir? Lachazir means to return, to reinstate, right? Reinstatement. Chazir Shemachzer Sateres Labaleo. It returns the crown to its rightful owner. Edom, Edom will be the cause of the crown to be returned to its, its, its rightful owner. the Moshim the the Moshim, the saviors will come to to judge Haresov, and how will Hashem have the Mlucha? Melch Mashiach, the Ficha Yoshiv Mom Medina. So again, what does it mean? The Chazir will be the one to be Marza Torah Yoshna. What does that mean? That means it's an attachment. Through its, because of its void, that causes Mashiach to be, in, to be in, reinstated. If Esau will be the right person and be behaving and he represents Kedusha, doesn't draw anything after him. But because he's a representation of void and vacuum, and everything impure, which is not what existence is, if he draws, he's the cause of, of, the, of returning the crown to its rightful owner. He's the precipitator of Mashiach. The evil precipitates Mashiach, the void precipitates Mashiach. Well, the Fich Yoshiv Mom Bindino, Shri Koruch the Kosher Behedir Shalohem, he's entwined, he's enwrapped in that. Vacuum. Sha'edu shalem mevi lekabel malchus sacheres. Because of that void that that encourages and attracts another kingdom, it has to be replaced. V'tovin b'zeh dvar melyonim, and he says you'll be able to understand with this exalted concepts, with this. V'kia uma niskeres mitzaratzmo. The nation that's mentioned in its own right, Edom, it will be the one to cause the Malchus to be returned to its rightful owner. The glory will be reinstated to its rightful location. This nation and this kingdom has no relevance to what Malchus is. Afisa, from the word Ephes. Malchus Edom, what does Edom represent? When Daniel, he visualizes, he has a dream, and he sees in his dream the four kingdoms, and he sees Edom. What is Edom? Edom is armaments, destruction. Everything is destroying. It's a self-corrupted, destructive. It self-destructs. It's not that just going to self-destruct and nothing's left. It's how the Haidu Shal Yamalchus Bolam. It's not after them. There's no longer a kingdom. Just the opposite. The world cannot be without a king. You have to have a kingdom in the world. You know, we say that the Gemara says in, in Megillah that Malchusa Da'aruk Malchus the Rakia that the the earthly kingdom is a reflection of the heavenly kingdom. There's a heavenly kingdom. So that means in heaven there's always a kingdom. Hashem, right? God is the king. That's, that's Malchus the Rakia. If there's a Malchus, there has to be a Malchus. There has to be an earthly kingdom. So it doesn't mean to say once Edom is destroyed, there's no kingdom. No such thing. There has to be a kingdom. So therefore, when Edom will be destroyed, it will replace, be replaced with another kingdom. But not a corrupted, self destructive kingdom. And that kingdom nothing will, will follow that kingdom. Why? Because Because that is an eternal kingdom. That kingdom, Elf Mashiach, represents HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Therefore, that's eternal. Therefore, if it self-destructs, what has to be, it has to be replaced. can't be replaced with nothing. can't remain just a vacuum, a void. It's replaced with Malchus Shamayim. 
So she roams with Chacham Ba'agoras Chelik. She Omer Elio. This is my mentioned. Elio said to Reb Shuban Levi, Heichon Yosef. Reb Shuban Levi asked Elio, Where is Mashiach exactly today? Where is he? Omer Elio Zal Shu Yosef Al Pesach Hamidinu Sharomi. He's at the gates of Rome. That's where he is located. At the gates of Rome. Herolo Akesha Mashiach Shu Dovik Mechu Bavatzo Al Malchus Reviews. The soap show him. He's, he's telling him, he's holding at the gate. What, what is a Pesach? A Pesach you enter, but if Mashiach enters, what does that mean? That's really, he's holding by the end. If he's ready to enter, that means the kingdom is ready to fall. They're ready to fall. And the more says over there. If Klaus would have been worthy, he could have come then. And Elio told him, whenever we're worthy, come on the moment. Hashem is waiting for us. But he's at the Pesach. But if it's not at the end of the kingdom, how could he come immediately? So evidently it is the end. So they're, they're, they're extending their existence, but their extension of existence is based on us. So who's year. Now where's the Pesach of a, of, 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 of a country? Right? It's the end of the city. It's the end. She'ed ha'koruch b'sof ha'hovin z'ehete v'izbar b'sof ha'netzach v'esos Hashem izborach says he will explain this further in his other work, Netzach Yisroel. So why was Moshe? Just as Mashiach is in the gates of Rome, who he is the redeemer that the void engenders, and what it's holding by the end, Moshe is the goel. He was the end, he was born at the end of the 210 year period, 80 years before. They left, but that was the, that was the end of the, of the bondage. Because if not for the void that existed within existence, it wouldn't engender another entity. Void engenders and precipitates something else. Just as Edom precipitates the Mashiach, the void and vacuum of Mitzrayim engenders Moshe Rabbeinu. V'odi shlucho lohovin himalchus Yisroel b'ischacho The kingdom of Israel, of Yisroel, when we came into being, before that there was no malchus Yisroel, we, we, we were Ivrim. We weren't, we weren't the people yet. We weren't the nation. When did we come? Moshe Rabbeinu was considered Melech, even though Shol was the first official Melech Yisroel. He was actually, he was, he was actually he was anointed. He was anointed by Shmuel. Shmuel Novi anointed Shaul to be the first king. But until we had that official king, what was Moshe's status? Moshe, Moshe was, no, his status was Melech. He was a Melech. Me, Moshe's status, his, his category was Melech. When did the domination as a nation, when we left, we became, we were, Mel, we were Klal Yisrael, Malchus Kodum Zel Yisrael, until then we, we weren't considered a Malchus. Lost in Malchus Mashiach, Shin Schadish Malchus Chadosho. He says, at the end of time, where there will be a new kingdom, it will be renewed. He yotzes men a Malchus Rishon Shalaf Neze. He says, Malchus Yisrael HaKadosho. He says, what's the between the Malchus Yisrael and the kingdom of any other nation? The holy kingdom of Yisrael, Sheishlo Madrege Elokis Pinimis. Here, it has an inner godliness. Malchus Yisrael, the Kedusha, is, emanates from a godliness. Madrege Elokis Pinimus. There's a dimension of godliness within the Jewish people, which is internal. Hitzomechs of Malchus built Kedusha. And what engenders that? The void. What is Mitzrayim? Mitzrayim is Memtesh Arituma, the 49th level of impurity. This is what Mitzrayim is. This is, as the Maral always says, this is Hamor. This is Chomer. Of all the 70 nations, there was no nation that had a greater lack of, of, of spirituality than, than the Egyptians. That's what they call Hamorim. Besar Hamorim Besorim. The flesh is the equivalent of the flesh of donkeys. Shkach Roy Lamalchesh Lamal Elkis. Malapnimis, that the nation, the kingdom, which has 
a godly exaltedness, status which is internal. Service are cold. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. We say that that Beis Yaakov is Eish, Beis Yosef is Lahovo, and Esav is Kash. I mean, as long as Yaakov, Yaakov is fire. He's equipped the fire. Esav is, is, is straw. So you put straw to fire, it's consumed immediately. But a fire means it's dormant. What's lahovo? Lahav is a flame. The only way you can consume the, the straw is only if you have a flame. It's Yosef lahovo. Yosef is lahovo. That's when Yosef was born, that's when Yaakov comes to love and says, I'm ready to leave. Until Yosef was born, there wasn't a consideration for him to leave. Das of Lovon. This is after 14 years. Yosef is born, he comes to his father and says, I'm ready to leave. Why? So Rashi says, Chazal, because Yosef is Lahova. Because Yosef is the flame. Now, because Yosef represents something which can consume Esau. He can be consumed. But it's interesting. The internal aspect of Klal Yisrael Zesh. That's the Malal Okis. And what is the flame? The flame is an expression of that Kedusha. How do we consume Esau? Straw is what? Has no value. Has no value. All is, it's like, it's substance, but with no value. So how is it consumed? When that holiness expresses itself. How does it express itself? Through Yosef. And that's where Yosef was born. Yaakov hadn't, wasn't concerned about Esau any longer. Because, because Yosef is Lahova, based Yosef Lahova, and Esau is Kash. Is straw. This is something. A fruit as it's developing. It's budding and before it's fully developed. It's within its, 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 within its, its, its peel. Klipa. It's husk. Well, what happens when the fruit fully matures and ripens and grows? It has an outer husk that protects it, and what it, it's actually it forms sufficiently, and it could continue to grow, and it's sufficiently developed. It sheds its husk. The outer shell, that outer leaf, is shed. Anything which has an internal status, ultimately it expresses itself, and it sheds the outer trappings. It sheds it. Phenomenal. What's base Paro? If we speak about Paro's palace, this epitomized and personified what Egypt is. The house of Paro. What is Moshe? Moshe himself represents is the ultimate, this is the potential of Kalal Yisrael. When he develops sufficiently, he'll be the Goel. So he's internally, he's holy. Now when something, it's similar to the fruit, the ripening, developing, and eventually when it's ready to come fully developed, it sheds the outer. It sheds the husk which protected it. So that's the reason. The palace represents Golis Mitzrayim. That's the material, the physical. Moshe, and what engenders Kedusha? We said the void. The void engenders what's needed to address the void. And when it becomes fully expressive, it dispels the void. What is that? That's like shedding its leaf. And there's no longer in Egypt. What does it mean? It's a madrega pinimus. It's an internal. It's a status which is in, internal. It's not obvious. Uh, just thinking. It's very interesting. 
Um, Chazal tell us that when Hashem begins punishing an, an, uh, a nation, they're totally destroyed and that there's no comeback afterwards. Meaning any civilization that was destroyed, it goes into the dustbins of history. And then you have a new civilization. Now, every civilization was destroyed. was destroyed through who? Through Kalal Yisrael. You had the Egyptian, you had the Babylonian, you had the Greeks, you had the, the, you had the Medes, you had the Persians, and then you had Edom. We're still with Edom. But each one, when we expressed ourselves, meaning when Klaus were worthy of to be redeemed, to be released from that Goldus, what happened, to, what happened to the exile? What happened to that civilization? It no longer exists. It became something of the past. So again, it's similar to what he's saying. It's not something we're released, they exist as a world power and it's us. No. When we're released, it's because they don't exist any longer. I'll give you an example. Bovel, the Babylonians is destroyed by Srisham. They destroyed the base of Mikdosh. And it was only true because we destroyed. We failed, therefore it, we were the cause of its destruction. The Navi says, the name of Hashem, you will be there seven years. After seven years, you're coming back. So Hashem says to the Bukhadnezzar, who's the Babylonian emperor, because you destroyed the Beis HaMikdosh, there'll be no remnant of your family, of your language. It'll be totally extinct. Who was the last descendant of the Bukhadnezzar Vashti? When Vashti was killed, that was the end of the family line. The language, the culture... It's something of the past. What does that mean? Why? Why? But when did that happen? That happened when the Gula was ready to happen. The Gula was Purim. After Purim, we're ready to come back. This was the end of the, the period. We're ready to come back to Israel. The Bukhadnez, uh, Achshayush gave them, there was a question to, to get, give us permission to rebuild the Beis Amigdash. Soon we had Ezra. We returned. This was the end of the 70-year period. Because we were already expressing our inner profile. What's the inner profile of the Jew? Kedusha. Kedusha. The Chashmanoim. Right? What was the end of the Greek period? The Chashmanoim. What was the expression of the Chashmanoim? The expression was Kedusha. Right? What does the coin represent? That's the spirituality of Klal Yisrael. Tyro. And how, it's interesting, how did Hanukkah manifest itself? Oil. What's oil? Oil, oil is fire. Right? The menorah. So the inner Kedusha, which was dormant, it expressed itself. How did it express itself? Through the Kohanim. Afterwards, the Greeks were gone. Then the Romans came in because the, they became corrupted. The family became corrupted afterwards. This is, this is a time of Hurdis, Herod. Herod made an alliance with, with the Romans. He invited him to come in. The Gemara says 186 years before the destruction of the Baisheni, he invited the Romans to come in. And that was the beginning of the end. But until then, initially when the Nes Hanukkah took place, this was the, an expression of Aish. What happens when you have Aish? Everything falls away. It's interesting. We find Rashi cites Chazal that um, Yaakov was worried, was concerned about Esau. You know, how does he stand up? So Rashi cites, cites a medrash that it's similar to the person who has camels loaded with, with, with flax. And the flax is bulging from every side of the camel. And he has to bring, and the, the camels have to be shooed. Has to take it to the blacksmith. So the camel driver, who has all these bales of flax bulging from everything, he says, how do we get into the blacksmith shop with the camels? So there was a person there who was a wise person, a wise guy, not too smart. He says, why not? No problem. One spark of the, of the bell, of the fire, of the attaches to the flax, you have no problem with the flax, it's gone. Easy way to get in. So, uh, so our coach says, Yaakov, you have, you have no, nothing to worry about. 
Esav is cash. Your Esh, a spark, your spark, ignites Esav, they're gone. They're vaporized. They're incinerated. There's no remnant of them. So how is that, that Moshe, that allegory, which is presented, what consumes Esav? The Kedusha. The Kedusha of Yaakov. Esh is the Kedusha. That's what we're talking about. That's the representation of Esh. It's an expression of the fire. The Gemara says in Tainus that Kol Tam Tchochem Shein Koshek Kebarzel Einu Tam Tchochem that a Torah scholar who's not as hard as iron is not a Tam Tchochem, meaning he has to be uncompromising, regardless of the pressures, in terms of abiding by the halacha, can never compromise the halacha. A person can be accommodating but never at the expense of, a, of compromising of Torah. You can never compromise the Torah. So, kol tamachoch she'en koshe kebarzel. If he's not as hard as iron, in a tamul chochem. So the Mark says, but you'll find times where tamul chochem gets angry. So Mark says, why does he get angry? Because Torah is compared to fire. Where do we find Torah is compared to fire? Because it's, it's a posuk. My words are like fire. Therefore, when the Talmud becomes angry, it's the fire, it's Rizcha do Raisa do It's the fire of Torah that's burning within him. He has coals of, it's burning. But what's burning? So the anger, but what's the anger? Because he sees things which are difficult to tolerate. What about if you see a Jew, God forbid, want, wanting to commit suicide? And a person values that person's life. Could he contain himself? Not possible. Because the Talmud Chochem has that fire in him, he has a sense of clarity and understanding when he sees the, halach, the law being transgressed. It's like the person taking his life. So he can't contain himself. That's the fire we're talking about. That's called the vocation of Hashem. So what is the expression? What is what the Talmud Chochem? That's the expression of the fire. That's the Gdusha that's within him. But that's unfortunate. That's only the Talmud Chochem. What about the masses? Right? When we're ready for Gula, the Jews themselves will express that inner fire. Every Jew has that inner Kedusha. That's the fire. And when that fire is ready to be expressed, the world will be vaporized. All evil will come to an end. Vavin Dovzekyu Omuk Ma'od he says, you have to understand this principle. It's something which is deep and profound. For Yodulim, Yishodeh, Binyan, Dvarim, Hanivdolim, Hayotzim. He says, but it's known to those who understand ethereal concepts. Umisalim, Mitoch, Advarim, Hachomrim, which emanate, which are brought about and activated as a result of the material. I was thinking, we have, we have the Mars tells us in Sukkah, the 36 hidden tzaddikim in the world, and the world stands in their merit. What 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 have we hidden? What do I mean the hidden tzaddikim? What is a tzaddik? A tzaddik is just not an ordinary person. A tzaddik means he has a representation of kedusha. It's his kedusha. These people they may be hidden, but they're concealed. What why are they concealed? Because again, because it's not ready yet to be seen. Because the fire. The fruit hasn't reached this level of maturity to express itself to dispel the husk and the chaff which is around it. What's the value of chaff? Chaff has no value unto itself. It's only there as long as the fruit is developing, as long as the kernel is developing. That's chaff. Right? How do you remove the chaff? You thresh it. That's the threshing process. That detaches the kernel from the, from the chaff. And what happens? And then afterwards, you have what is the value of chaff? It has no value. Its value is only versus the kernel. Where is the location of Mashiach? In the province of Edom. He said, the reason why he, I spoke so lengthily about this, because it's something of great importance. 
Lohovin has Sibo Lom Nizgad Lom Moshe Rabbeinu Lom Vesholim Bebeis Paro. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu have to develop in the palace of Paro? Moshe, he's an innocent little baby. But this is, this is, this is, the word giant is an understatement in the making. This is the development of something which is not to be believed, but who recognized it? Who recognized it? Bilam recognized this. When Moshe, as a baby, took the crown off Paro's head and put it on his own head, he says, this, this child is going to destroy Egypt. He will dethrone you. That's childishness. But it's interesting. See, what, what was the test? A plate of gold nuggets and a plate of hot coals. Glowing coals. Moshe Rabbeinu was going for the gold. Because he understood. So that would confirm that when he took the crown off Paro's head, it was, it was, it was understanding what he did. The Malach pushed him into the, into the hot fire. But it's interesting. There were glowing coals. I'm saying what the Maral says. He took the glowing coal, but the glowing coal fact was himself. He was the glowing coal. He didn't come. He, he didn't reach his maturation point yet. His maturation point was only after every, when he was 80, 70, bordering on 80 years old. Then he was ready. Then he was in his full, full form and full glory. Now the morale speaks about something very important. Moshe's own, own parents named him when he was born. He had seven names that he was given by his parents. But yet, the name that he's referred to in the Torah is only the name that was given to him by Bas Paro, by his adopted mother, Moshe. So why does the Torah value Yocheved and Amram were special people? As he said earlier, they were so special, they merited to what? To bring the special child, the one of a kind child into existence. But yet, the name which we identify Moshe is the name of Bas Paro, not the name that's given by the most special couple who merited to have such a child. She called his name Moshe because he was drawn from the water. There's a Sefarno on this Pasuk says something phenomenal. Now, Bas Paro she said she was an ordinary woman. She converted she, she cleansed herself from the idolatry of her father, as it says in the Gemara. Rashi cites the Gemara. We discussed, <coughs> she saw the Shekhinah with Moshe. That tells you what level she was at that time. If she was privy to see Shekhinah, she was very special. And why did she merit to save the Redeemer? That's a confirmation again on her specialist. Only the meritorious merit to have something special. Okay? When she saw Moshe, Moshe, she understood, should have drowned. Why did he not drown? Evidently, it's clear, it's clear that he's meant to save others. That his destiny is to save others. Just as he miraculously did not drown, why did Hashem allow him not to drown? Because his destiny is to pull others out of the brink. As he was taken out of the water, which is miraculous that he's alive, because he should have drowned. Therefore, his destiny is to take others, to extricate others from impossible situations. And which was? He's the goel. He's the ultimate. Vishmos Rabo, Mikato Lomid, Schorin Shogoni Chasodim. From here we learn the reward for those who do acts of loving kindness. It's evident what's the major saying. If he had names that were given by his parents, why did she, why the name that he carried was the name that she gave him? Evidently, we see the schar of Gomli Chasodim. Moshe Rabbeinu, the Goel, the Redeemer, the Makabal Torah, the one who received the Torah, at Sinai. Torah Tzivalonu Moshe, Moshe Akilas Yaakov, right? When we speak about what encapsulates it totally, Torah Tzivalonu Moshe. So, you know what? You know what? You know, you know what, what? What kind of what kind of merit? What kind of reward that is? The name that he carries is the name that Basparo gave him, not the name that his parents gave him. Because she was going to him. She could have turned the basket over and let him drown. She went despite the decree, despite the position of the paganism. She saved him. 
This is Mikan. Atolome tzchor shel gomli chasodim. You see the schar of gomli chasodim, those who do acts of chesed. V'nir l'forish. Ki atorah kol drachel darki noam. V'chol nisiv voseo shalom. All the ways of the Torah are pleasantness and its pathways are peace, peaceful. Why is the Torah called Torah Chesed? If the Torah is Noam and Sholom, so what does Torah provide? This is the greatest Chesed. We have, we read at the beginning of Bechul uh, if you follow my my statutes, you'll have endless blessing. Blessing. Then it says, "Venosati shalom boritz," and I will bring peace to the land. But if you have it all, what difference does it make? He says, "If you have peace, you have it all. If you don't have peace, you think you have it all, but you have nothing." So what is it? Nikris bishul zatoras chesed. If it's nesivoseh shalom, it's rochel darchi noam, and nesivoseh shalom. Then it's what? That's Torah's Chesed. The Chesed, Torah's Chesed, al Right? In the Eishas Chayu. Torah's Chesed, Eishas Chayu, Miyitzo. Torah's Chesed, al It's referring to the Torah. It's Torah's Chesed. Ulefiche Hashem shekoro lo basio. Hear this? What did you name, name Basio? Basko. That was the name of Asfar. You know, her father named her some Egyptian name. What she converted... To monotheism, she became Basko, the daughter of God. But it's interesting. I thought she, this name she, she took herself, like a woman who converts to be good of a Jew, whatever she wants to call herself. Soro, Ruth, Rus, whatever she wants to call herself. The Chazal tell her, he's saying, Fijo, Hashem Shekoralo Basio. Hashem called it Basio. Shoise Gomelas Chesed, Huikara Torah. Here, this is the essence of Torah. That the Torah uses the name Moshe, it's to reveal what is the essence of Torah chesed. Because Basio provided the greatest chesed when she said Moshe Rabbeinu. See, the way I understand it, it's even, even to a greater degree. If she wouldn't say Moshe Rabbeinu, the world would have never met its objective. So she provided a chesed for all existence. You wouldn't have had a Klal Yisrael. So that they were all beneficiaries of Torah and being able to have a relation with Hashem on the ultimate level. Who was the one who set that in motion? Vasparo. Because if she wouldn't have saved Moshe Rabbeinu, it wouldn't have happened. So who provided the greatest chesed for mankind? Masya. So therefore, because Torah is Torah's chesed, how do I identify that? Moshe. Moshe, Torah synonymous. What's Torah? Torah is Torah's chesed. Baba Kodesh Baruch Hu lo kora lo shem acher. Kisho yimadab rimo divrei Torah. Shedroche ech darchinam. When Hashem would communicate with Moshe, the words of Torah, which are droche ech darchinam. El v'sheish ladag di v'ma she'omro ki min ha'mayim v'shisiu. But what, what's the source of the name? Look, that's, that's why the Torah used the name Moshe. But why, why did she call him Moshe? Because he was drawn from the water. Now, where was he found? He was in the Nile. Nile is your. It should say, Kiminayor Yishisiu. Baba the Loma Kiminayor Vishisiu, the Horus Mesa Maim Hotzi also from the location. The person is floating in a very tranquil pond. He said, It's not such a miracle. Your probably there was a current there. He definitely should have drowned. She should have named it. Kiminayor Vishisiu. To reveal the greater miracle, right? That would reveal even a greater miracle. Maya means you have water could be in every type of setting. It could be the most tranquil setting, where there's nothing to worry about. So the morale answers. Kishe Moshe hu haral ikar inyan Moshe maloso. The word Moshe reveals and elucidates and gives us understanding of what the essence, what Moshe was. Asher umesulak umoser minamayim. He's removed from water. Now he says something phenomenal. Something phenomenal. Minamayim ishisuyu. He's removed. 
he doesn't share any characteristic, there's no commonality between Moshe and water. Now water. What is the form of water? It depends. If it's spread over a wide area, right? It's not deep. What about if you freeze it? it takes in the form. What about if you heat it? You vaporize it, right? So what is the form of water? It takes on all kinds of guises and forms. What is Moshe? Moshe is the ultimate form. Water has no form. No specific form. It's not set in any form. Moshe Rabbeinu is the ultimate surah. The ultimate profile of what a human being should be in the spiritual sense that was Moshe Rabbeinu. See, he's totally removed from no form. What was the specialness, the exaltedness of Moshe? He had the profile of the ultimate profile. He had the ultimate profile. If a Jew, his essence, I'll give you an example. A person is endowed with tremendous beauty and he paints his face with the ugliest face. He said, well, evidently he seems to be ugly. But if you remove the paint, and what covers the face, you see beauty. What should the essence of the Jew be? A physical being. His physicality should radiate holiness. His neshama should be so vibrant and so thriving, the physicality of the body should be spiritualized that it can't contain that radiance. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. Because that is the essence of what the Jew is. He's not the physicality. He's not as physical. He's not just a physical being. So who's totally removed from the physicality of his existence? Moshe Rabbeinu. Because that's the true profile of the Jew. The intellectual being is like an angel, a malach. There's only form. There's no, there's no physicality. The one who has greater relevance to the angel, he's closer to that profile. It's interesting. The Rambam, the Elvis Talmud Torah, writes at the beginning, it says that, quote the Pesach, is, Vayal Ivu Bemalche Elokim. They disgrace the angels of God. And Rambam says, Who are who are the angels? These are the Talmudic Chachomim. Angels. Malochim. They disgraced. And that's why the base, first base mission was destroyed. Because they disgraced the Talmudic Chachomim. But what, is, what does Talmud Chachomim have to do with, with an angel? What is an angel? An angel is that spiritual being. A person who is a true Talmud Chachomim. Tocho Kibaro. Right? Similar to Oron. It says, It was gold on the inside and the outside. That a person is genuine. And he's fully committed in the most sincere way. That's what a Talmud Chacham is. That means he's permeated. It's not only, it's knowledge. He internalizes the knowledge. That he fully absorbs it, that, that's it becomes his function. When that becomes your function, you're the closest thing to the Malach. You are the closest thing. Because you're removed. You're removed from the physicality. Because it only becomes, it becomes a means, it's not an end. It has no value as an end. That's what he says. The one who is closest to the status of the angel, he's closer to that profile. His essence had no, his physicality had no relevance to him. But what water represents, water is lacking in profile. It has no profile. Because it can take on all kinds of guises. Shape, the form, everything. In every sense of the word. He was fully removed from that. The question is, how did she know it? She's, he's, a little, he's, he's a few months old. I mean, Bas Power already detected that. So you could say, either you could say, because she saw the Shekhin Emo. What's, what's a newborn doing 
with the Shechina, the Divine Presence with him, if he already has realms to the Shechina at this age, his physicality is only a circumstance, has no realms to his essence. He is the real thing, so to say. That's either that, or because he was saved from the water, where the water should have consumed him, he should have been taken in by the water, that means because he has no relevance to water. So if he has no relevance to water, that's an indication that he's the ultimate in what the, what the spiritual profile is. Phenomenal. It's called Mayim. It's plural. Why in the plural? Because it has all kinds of guises. Lotim Sloshin Yochen be Mayim, the fish called Achtus, Mikoach Hatsura Hamachit, as a dover. The Mayim him Blitzura Gemura. The Mayim him Blitzura Makuyem is Bloshin Rabim. Because it has multiple guises. It's interesting. Phenomenal, just sort of something. Mayim has no tsura. There's a word which has no plural. There's a famous story with the Baylor's trial. The, how do we know that only a Jew contaminates and not in, in an oil, not a non Jew? Because it says, it says, Zosa Torah, Odom ki oil. The Odom who passes away, his remains are in a tent. Atem kri modem hem lo kri modem. So, they came to Rameir Shapir at Zechat Tzarek Lebrocha, and they consulted with him at the time of the Beilistra with his rabid anti-Semitism in Russia, and they said, what, because he was accused of killing a Christian child for, for its blood. So he says, what the prosecutor is going to bring up in the court, that you Jews don't value the, the life of a, of a Christian, of a non-Jew, Explicit in the Talmud. Atem kriy modem him lo kriy modem. You're, you're the Adam. We're not human beings. You don't value us as human beings. We're subhuman. Therefore, you could kill us the way you kill a rodent. You kill us. He says, "This is what you have to answer them." In the Hebrew language, there's only wor one word that doesn't have a plural. Adam. There's no plural for the word Adam. This is what he said. Why? Because he says it's unheard of. You have one Jew which is put on, is, is in question whether he will live or die. World Jewry, wherever they are, is championing his cause, donating money for his legal fees. Why? You have Jews in, living in another country. Why is it their issue? Because Jews, the Jews are not plural. Jews are a singular. We're one entity. Atem Kriyam Adam. doesn't mean, God forbid, that we don't value what a non-Jew is. But the level of unity that exists by Jews... Therefore, there's no plural by Odom. Atem Kriyam Odom. Something happens to another uh, ethnic group. The other ethnic group couldn't care less what it. Jew, regardless of where you are, we're all one. That's the unity of a Jew. Atem Kriyam Odom. So now it's, it's terrific. Mayim is lacking in profile. Atem Kriyam Odom. The only one who has relevance to that profile is Odom, is you. The Jew could be that Surinav Delis. The Jew has relevance. That's part of his potential. The non-Jew has no relevance to that. So the profile that we could be totally removed from material and to reflect the profile of an angel, that's only Klal Yisrael. Not, not the nations of the world. So as Mayim is plural, Adam is singular. To be continued.